post-alveolar consonants are consonants articulated with the tongue near or touching the back of the alveolar ridge, further back in the mouth than the alveolar consonants, which are at the ridge itself, but not as far back as the hard palate. Examples of post-alveolar consonants are the English palato-alveolar consonants, e florin, t e florin, e, de, as in the words shill, chill, vision, and jill, respectively. There are a large number of types of post-alveolar sounds, especially among the sibilants. The three primary types are palato-alveolar, alveolopalatal, and retroflex. The palato-alveolar and alveolopalatal subtypes are commonly counted as palatals in phonology, since they rarely contrast with true palatal consonants. Post-alveolar sibilants, the sibilant post-alveolars are sometimes called hush consonants, because they include the sound of English shhh. For most sounds involving the tongue, the place of articulation can be sufficiently identified just by specifying the point of contact on the upper part of the mouth, along with any secondary articulation such as palatalization or labialization. However, among sibilants, and post-alveolar sibilants in particular, Slight differences in the shape of the tongue and the point of contact on the tongue itself correspond to large differences in the resulting sound. For example, the alveolar fricative, S, and the three post-alveolar fricatives, E, E, florin, E differ noticeably both in pitch and sharpness, with the order, S, E, E, florin, E corresponding to progressively lower pitched and duller sounds. As a result it is necessary to specify many additional subtypes equals tongue shape equals, the main distinction is the shape of the tongue, which corresponds to differing degrees of palatalization. From least to most palatalized, these are retroflex, palato-alveolar, and alveolopalatal. The increasing palatalization corresponds to progressively higher pitched and sharper sounding consonants. Speaking non-technically, the retroflex consonant, E sounds somewhat like a mixture between the regular English, E florin of ship, and the H at the beginning of herd, especially when pronounced forcefully and with a strong American R. While the alveolopalatal consonant, E, sounds like a strongly palatalized version of, E florin. Somewhat like nourish U. Palato-alveolar sounds are normally described as having a convex tongue, that is the front, central part of the tongue is somewhat raised compared to the tip, back and sides, which gives it weak palatalization. For retroflex sounds, the tongue shape is either concave, or flat. For alveolopalatal sounds, the front half of the tongue is flat, and raised so that it closely parallels the upper surface of the mouth, from the teeth to the hard palate. Behind that is a sudden convex bend. The following table shows the three types of post-alveolar sibilant fricatives defined in the IPA. Equals point of tongue contact equals, a second variable is whether the contact occurs with the very tip of the tongue, with the surface just above the tip, called the blade of the tongue, or with the underside of the tip. Apical and subapical articulations are always tongue up, with the tip of the tongue above the teeth, while laminal articulations are often tongue down, with the tip of the tongue behind the lower teeth. The upward curvature of the tongue tip to make apical or subapical contact renders palatalization more difficult, so domed consonants are not attested with subapical articulation, and fully palatalized sounds occur only with laminal articulation. Furthermore, the apical-laminal distinction among palato-alveolar sounds makes little perceptible difference. Both articulations, in fact, occur among English speakers. As a result, the differing points of tongue contact are significant largely for retroflex sounds. Retroflex sounds can also occur outside of the post-alveolar region, ranging from as far back as the hard palate to as far forward as the alveolar region behind the teeth. Subapical retroflex sounds are often palatal. Such sounds occur particularly in the Dravidian languages. Alveolar retroflex sounds tend to be apical, which are well known from their occurrence in northern Iberia, like in Asta Leonese, Basque, Castilian Spanish, Catalan, Galician and Northern Portuguese. As a result of the large number of retroflex varieties, differing IPA symbols are sometimes used. For example, more forward articulations are often denoted, C rather than, E. 
For more information on these differing varieties, see the article on retroflex consonants. Equals position of tongue tip equals, there is an additional distinction that can be made among tongue down laminal sounds, depending on where exactly behind the lower teeth the tongue tip is placed. A little bit behind the lower teeth is a hollow area in the lower surface of the mouth. When the tongue tip rests in this hollowed area, there is an empty space below the tongue, which results in a relatively more hushing sound. When the tip of the tongue rests against the lower teeth, there is no sublingual cavity, resulting in a more hissing sound. Generally, the tongue down post alveolar consonants have the tongue tip on the hollowed area, whereas for the tongue down alveolar consonants, the tongue tip rests against the teeth. This accentuates the hissing versus hushing distinction of these sounds. However, the palato alveolar sibilants in the Northwest Caucasian languages such as Adwik have the tongue tip resting directly against the lower teeth rather than in the hollowed area. Laidforged and Madison term this a closed laminal postalveolar articulation, which gives the sounds a quality that Catford describes as hissing hushing sounds. Catford transcribes them as I, O I copyright. A laminal closed articulation could also be made with alveolopalatal sibilants and a laminal non closed articulation with alveolar sibilants, but no language appears to do so. In addition, no language seems to have a minimal contrast between two sounds based only on the closed slash non closed variation, with no concomitant articulatory distinctions. Equals examples equals a few languages distinguish three different post-alveolar sibilant tongue shapes. Examples are the Sino-Tibetan Northern Kayang and Southern Kayang, which make such a distinction among Africans in the Northwest Caucasian language Uwik. More common are languages such as Mandarin Chinese and Polish that distinguish two post-alveolar sibilants, typically because they are maximally distinct. For more information on possible distinctions, see the article on sibilants. The attested possibilities, with exemplar languages, are as follows. Note that the IPA diacritics are simplified. Some articulations would require two diacritics to be fully specified, but only one is used in order to keep the results legible without the need for open type IPA fonts. Also, Laidforged has resurrected an obsolete IPA symbol, the under dot, to indicate apical post alveolar, and that notation is used here. Post-alveolar non-sibilants, non-sibilant sounds can also be made in the post-alveolar region. For these sounds, however, the number of acoustically distinct variations is significantly reduced. The primary distinction for such sounds is between laminal palatalized and apical retroflex non-palatalized. Equals non-palatalized equals, retroflex stops, nasals and laterals occur in a number of languages across the world. Examples are the South Asian languages and various East Asian languages such as Vietnamese. The sounds are fairly rare in European languages but do occur, for example, in Swedish, where they are often considered to be allophones of sequences such as all. Also, for some languages that distinguish dental, versus alveolar stops and nasals, these are actually articulated closer to prealveolar and postalveolar, respectively. The normal rhotic consonant in American English is a retroflex approximant, e. Retroflex rhotics of various sorts, especially approximants and flaps occur commonly in the world's languages. Some languages also have retroflex trills. Malayalam in fact has two trills, at least for many speakers a euro, rye versus, rea euro the latter of which is retroflex. Toda is particularly unusual as having six trills including a palatalized non-palatalized distinction and a three-way place distinction among dental, alveolar and retroflex trills. Equals palatalized equals, palatalized post-alveolar non-sibilants are usually considered to be alveolopalatal. Some non-sibilant sounds in some languages are said to be palato-alveolar rather than alveolopalatal, but in practice it is unclear if there is any consistent acoustic distinction between the two types of sounds. In phonological descriptions, alveolopalatal postalveolar non sibilants are usually not distinguished as such. Instead, they are considered to be variants of either palatal non sibilants. Even these two types are often not distinguished among nasals and laterals, 
as the vast majority of languages have only one palatalized palatal nasal or lateral in their phonemic inventories. For example, the sound described as a palatal lateral in various Romance languages and often indicated as is most often alveolopalatal, AE squared and sometimes a palatalized alveola, LA squared, for example in some northern Brazilian Portuguese dialects. The IPA does not have specific symbols for alveolopalatal non sibilants, but they can be denoted using the advanced diacritic, for example ICIE squared IEA copyright. Synologists often use special symbols for alveolopalatal non sibilants, I paragraph E micron EI copyright, created by analogy with the curls used to mark alveolopalatal sibilants. However, the actual sounds indicated using these symbols are often palatal or palatalized alveolar rather than alveolopalatal, just like the variation for symbols like E squared E. However, a few languages do distinguish alveolopalatal sounds from other palatalized non sibilants in the dental to palatal region. Many dialects of Irish, in fact, have a three way distinction among palatalized nasals between dorsal palatal, E squared, laminal alveolopalatal, R to the first permal E squared, and apical palatalized alveolar, Ni squared. The other dialects have lost one of the two palatalized coronals, but still have a two way distinction. A similar distinction between palatal, E squared and alveolopalatal, R to the first permal E squared exists in some non standard forms of Malayalam. Equals examples equals, some languages distinguish palatalized and non palatalized post alveolar nasals and or laterals. Some of the most notable distinctions among acute non sibilants are as follows. Some Australian languages distinguish four coronal nasals and laterals, laminal dental, Ni li, apical alveola, nl, laminal post alveola, r to the first permal e squared a e squared, and apical post alveola, e cubed e. The non standard Malayalam dialects mentioned above have five acute nasals, laminal dental, ni, apical alveola, n, laminal post alveola, r to the first permal e squared, subapical palatal, e cubed, and dorsal palatal, e squared. Standard Malayalam is missing the laminal palatalized post alveolar. The conservative Irish dialects mentioned above likewise have five acute nasals, again including four coronal. However, only four different primary articulations are involved, as a secondary velarized palatalized distinction is at play. The sounds in question are laminal dental velarized, ni, apical alveolar velarized, ni, apical alveolar palatalized. Ni squared, laminal post alveolar, R to the first permal E squared, and dorsal palatal, E squared. These eight sounds participate in four velarized palatalized pairs, mi mi squared. Ni to the first permal E squared. Ni ni squared. Angstrom E squared. Other dialects have variously reduced the four coronal nasals to three or two. Post alveolar clicks. There are two postalveolar click types that can occur, commonly described as postalveolar and palatal, but perhaps more accurately described as apical and laminal postalveolar, respectively. See also place of articulation, palatoalveolar consonant, alveolopalatal consonant, retroflex consonant, list of phonetics topics. References